On August 25th, I had posted a video called, A Creature Has Been Bothering Us For Quite Some Time. The witness, Alejandro Ortiz, has contacted me again with more information. I begin to ask my grandma more on this topic and where they came from in our native Latino Mexican culture. Me and my family went outside with my grandma near our house and she explained everything to us. When you want to interact with the big guys, the best thing you should do is stay across from the Bigfoot, male or female, and wave your hand at them. If the Bigfoot waves back at you, then this means they accepted your request of interacting with them. If they don't wave back, then they will either walk away or chase you away from their neighborhood by throwing stones. This is mainly done by them because they have children in those caves and think that you will attack them and their family members. They dislike hunters and guns. The next thing you have to do is speak out loud and say that you mean no harm and want to speak to them. You can say that out loud or in your mind. The Bigfoot will receive the message either way. They already know your name and intention by using telepathy. The shy ones will mostly stay behind a tree and observe you. When they see that you have no guns or bad intentions, they will walk towards you and speak to you by using their minds. They even save humans when they're in danger. Our ancient tribes lived with them and told us that they use their mind in order to speak to humans. They are very smart and decided to live in caves because they don't feel safe around hunters. A lot of Bigfoots have shooting wounds in them, but they recover very quickly. I asked my grandma another question, and that was, where do they come from? My grandma said they originate from elsewhere and migrated to Earth and spread to different caves on Earth by opening portals. When you see a UFO and a Bigfoot, then that means they left their home planet and came to visit Earth. May 12, 2009, San Juan County, New Mexico. A friend was visiting from out of town, and so we decided to take advantage of the clear skies and mild temperatures and go for a road trip. We'd just been down near Window Rock, Arizona, and were heading back to Farmington, New Mexico. The easiest way to do so is going over Narbona Pass. The speed limit on this road is 65, and I was traveling at 65 when coming around a corner just south of the picnic area. As I came around the corner, I noticed something moving rapidly in a diagonal direction up the side of the hill just where the forest meets the meadows lining either side of the highway. It would be on the east side of the road. I slowed down and said to my friend, Did you see that? He said he's seen it as well. I hit the brake to get another look, but knew that by the time I backed up, it would have been long gone. What we saw was larger than a black bear or elk. Blackish brown hair that could be seen hanging from all over its body. It was running on two legs up the hill. It never looked over at us, and we only saw it side and back. Broad and at least seven feet tall. We were both under the impression that we had startled it, and it was quickly trying to get into the forest cover. We stopped a mile or two up the road where the road crosses the creek at an ancient lava flow. The whole time we were looking out at rocks, there was an eerie feeling that we were both getting that something was watching us. We stayed around for an hour, and when the sun started to get lower behind the mountain, we decided it was best to leave. July 1980, San Juan County, New Mexico My family would spend the summers in the mountains and help herd sheep. We had a cabin, corrals, tents, several other structures on the property, and occasionally would have some weird experiences with our animals. The dogs would bark at something unseen to us, and the sheep would run away from something hidden in the forest. We would just feel like something was watching us from the shadows. It was near dusk, and my family had just finished dinner and were socializing. I'd been thumbing through a book when John, who I will call to respect his privacy, came running in the shade house we built next to the cabin, crying and white as a sheet. He was always the macho type that showed no emotion, so to see him this frightened alarmed my grandmother and my aunts and uncles to hurry out the front door. They stood at the threshold looking down in the direction of the well. I put the book down and walked to the door. They were all whispering in Navajo when I saw something down at the well. I first was excited because I thought it was a black bear. Then I noticed it was a grayish-brown color and was kneeling. I never heard of a bear that could kneel like a man. It looked as if it was washing something off or taking a drink. I had no problem with it until it looked over its shoulder at us and I could see its features. Manlike. That's all I needed to see. 
I ran into the cabin and hid in the bed under the covers. I was younger, and to this day, when I asked my mother about it, she says that everyone else was in agreement that it was a Bigfoot. A few weeks later, it was standing outside our tent about 2 a.m. I saw the shadow on the tent. As for the dogs, they weren't making a sound, when typically when anything or anyone comes around, they would howl and bark. October 2003, San Juan County, New Mexico. Late in the afternoon in early fall, we were getting ready to move our livestock back down from the mountain to the winter camp. My brother and I were with our mother, and we were looking for our cattle. Mum had cooked, and we ate a late lunch, got some rest, and talked about what areas we haven't checked yet. My brother was still eating, so my mum and I decided to check the area below our summer sheep camp. We got in my truck and started driving slowly. We had driven about a mile or two from the house, down the mountainside, through thick brushes and pine trees, driving slow enough to look around for any cows that were down that way. Usually there are some, but today they weren't anywhere to be found. So we kept driving, Mum talking about how the weather was changing and getting a bit chilly. I kept looking left and to the right, driving slowly. Then I saw a movement just behind the pine trees. First I thought it was a man, so I stopped and backed up just a bit and said to Mum, who's that? She goes, where? I said, right there, look, and pointed for her in that direction. That person was standing right next to a pine tree, tall and reddish brown. Then that person went behind a tree and stood there. So I backed up some more, and then it turned and started moving fast away from us into the thick brushes. That's when Mum and I both noticed that this thing had long, hairy arms, because when it turned around, the arms spun around. It was reddish brown. It then ran into the forest. We were still parked there, puzzled. Mum goes, what was that? I said, I don't know. Then I got scared and looked at my mum and said, let's go. We turned right there on the road and headed for home. We drove back fast, and believe me, this particular road requires slow driving, but not that afternoon. We got back to the house and I told my brother. He goes, it's probably a sheep herder. I told him a sheep herder wouldn't have long, hairy arms. Then he tells me, no, they wouldn't. He wanted to go back down there and look for that thing, but I was scared, and the sun was about to go down behind the mountain. It would be dark soon. There's no way that I'd be going down there in the dark. We packed up our stuff and left from the mountain. March 2002, San Juan County, New Mexico. Note, at their request, the witnesses' names were removed from this report. It was back a few years ago when we were still scouting put-ins and takeouts on the non-commercial sections of the San Juan River. We would drive these narrow two-track roads to find river access and then float and scout these sections accordingly. We could not find any real information, either in print or on the web, about the river from Shiprock, New Mexico, down to Montezuma Creek, Utah. We had to explore it ourselves by kayaks and canoes. Nowadays, we have a river company through the Navajo tribe and take people down this section all the time. We found a put-in at mile 10 just outside of Shiprock. It was about 10 bumpy bad road miles to the river, but provided a good launch area. We used my truck to put in with the boats. We had already dropped off a truck at the Four Corners Bridge. The day was fairly warm for early March, mid-60s, I think. We did the run in under five hours. We loaded the boats and gear in the truck and headed back over to pick up my truck. It was getting dark by the time we got there. My ex-wife and my partner pulled out of the small canyon before me. We carry walkie-talkies on the river and in our vehicles. I turned mine on and told them to wait up. My partner replied, sure, no problem, and just before he let go of the button, I heard my ex-wife screaming. What's going on up there? I shouted through my walkie-talkie. Your wife sees something up by that old sheep corral. Turn your brights on. I can't see it because I'm trying to get out of here and not wreck this truck. She said, look, it's on your right. You'll be coming right up on it. Sure enough, I got right behind them. I saw the back of it as I turned on my headlights. A few swings of its arms, and it was out of there. This was not what I expected to see at all. I would put it at about seven feet tall, skinny, gray in color, arms past the knees, like looking at the back of a Grinch head, pointy. My ex got a better look at it than I did. She said it looked right at her. Does not much want to talk about it. 
June 15, 2002, San Juan County, New Mexico. At approximately 8.30 p.m., I was on my way back from a dinner with my grandfather near Shiprock, New Mexico. While sitting on the passenger side of my mom's truck, I was looking out the window on the state highway near Crystal, New Mexico, before the Bull Canyon turnoff. At that moment, I was feeling calm, bored, and frustrated with trying to calm my younger cousin, who was very hyper. So, while I was looking for something to amuse him, I sighted something unusual moving. It was huge. It was as tall as the cedar trees that are around here. I was very scared and shaken when I saw it. I thought, what the heck is that? It looked like a man, but as I was watching it, I noticed it had hair covering its whole body with a mixture of gray, dark brown, and white on its chest. The head and feet also. The hands were all dark in color and the legs were dark gray. The face was lighter in color and when I saw the face, it was turned towards my direction. The forehead was most unusual and it really stuck out with no neck. It had a slump in the shoulder and its arms hung down to its knees. It took large steps and its arms swung back and forth. The distance from the highway was about 60 yards and I told my mom to stop, but she was scared, too scared to turn around. My uncles made a cast of what we believed to be the footprint the next morning. Thanks for joining me on the Bigfoot Project. I think you might find this video of interest as well. If you have a story you would like to share here, you can email me, Lynn Smith, at thebigfootproject at mail.com.